So welcome back to VMware Cloud Director 101. Um, and today we're going to talk about uh, a new concept for potentially some of you, but for so those of you who remember it, it's a, a vApps today. And that used to be a construct that existed in, in vSphere world. And it exists and is live and kicking in vCloud Director world. So um, Julian, can you talk to us about what a vApp is for those who don't know and how it operates, what it inherits from the vSphere world and um, how it behaves? Yes, yeah, so you're right, vApps, uh, the, the, the logical entity did exist in vSphere. Uh, it's a very similar concept in vCloud Director, but it's better, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly the same. Okay, great. So just as a quick uh, reminder, we've been talking about all VDCs and resource pools. When we create a vApp in vCloud Director, we're not creating a vApp in vSphere. In fact, it's going to be a resource pool. Yep. So let's start just creating a little example. First of all, the thing to point out is it's a container, a little object which consists of virtual machines, mm -hmm. of course, and the networks as well. And I'll do another network. So actually what I'm depicting here is your typical two-tier application. And then in addition to that, I'm also going to connect an edge because these I'm going to define as rooted networks in my vApp. So in other words, I've got, say, a, a web tier at the front. Mm -hmm. Beneath that, I've got a database tier, and they, they have to interact. And they'll interact through an edge, which is tied to the vApp. So, so all the routing is contained within the vApp, but then there's obviously an interface out to the rest of the org VDC. Exactly. So how I choose to connect that later, that could be, say, a NAT up to my mm -hmm. org VDC network. Yeah. Uh, and that means I can assign an IP address on that range. The point is, though, it's portable. So if I wanted to take this VApp and move it from one org VDC to another, so one virtual data center to another, I can do that in the vCloud Director portal, and these virtual machines will move. Now, that could be a logical move between resource pools and the same cluster. It could be between clusters. It could be between sites. Right. In addition to moving, I could, in fact, make a copy. So let's say this is my production internet-facing application, and I need to do some testing for the next upgrade and version. Um, rather than build a whole new stack of this application, which requires specialist skills and time, I can just clone this. I can take a copy of the entire vApp, all of the IP scheme, all the network layout so is taken same. with it. Yeah. And then crucially, when I connect this up to my OVDC, Change different it. IP, yeah. I could even VPN into it if I wanted to. Wow. So okay. completely separate, and I can do my testing alongside. And if I was being shrewd as a customer, I might deploy that copy to a lower cost or VDC. Oh, of course. And so this is great for DevOps. Absolutely. Yeah, this is for, ideal for, for the, the you know, we've got something stood up, we need to replicate that exactly, mm -hmm. do some testing, maybe make a patch release, whatever, and oh, then you could just promote this to live. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. That's a very modern sort of application 2.0 approach. Mm -hmm. and there's some other nice features too. So start up and shut down orders. These VMs have to be started in a particular order, very similar to what we see in vSphere with the old VM and mm -hmm. Construct. Start the web servers, wait five minutes or wait for VM tools to become ready, then start the next load. Similar shutdown policy as well. So that's carried through. In addition, the routing between the different networks that I've defined, the NAT relationships and the firewall relationships are all stored in the VM as an object. Got it. And that, that relation with the, the boot order is also something that we support in uh, VMware Cloud availability for DR, right? That's a really important thing. Exactly. Yeah. So vCloud availability, great tool, addresses vApps. So you have to package up your applications as vApps. And, and don't worry, a, a VM can be, uh, it can be a one VM vApp. Mm, but sure. technically behind the scenes of vCloud Director, everything is a vApp. So if you deploy one virtual machine, it's a vApp. Um, that doesn't really matter when you're, you're managing virtual machines. It becomes very useful, though, when you're starting to use things like backup and availability tools, like yeah. vCloud availability. You can say, here's my application X. I want you to protect this, and I want you to replicate it to another site. And then in the case of a failure or a test failover, start it up on the other site, start it in this particular order, and connect to this network. Is there any relationship between the networking components that happen in the underlying vSphere infrastructure and the vApp? So there are mappings. So we, of course, we do abstract everything. Mm -hmm. So within the vSphere world, we have port groups. Port groups are assigned typically to a VLAN in the data center. Mm -hmm. One of the great advantages of NSX is we can create a lot of these east-west networks on demand in software. So when a customer creates these networks, they're not in a data center. They're not VLANs. They are, in fact, uh, VXLAN wires, yeah. um, which means they can just be recreated anywhere they happen to land when they're built. Now, if a customer is using a VLAN in the data center, now, of course, the data center is the realm of the service provider, so the service provider has to issue these networks. 
you have three types of network in vCloud Director for the customer. You have um, Direct, which is a mapping to a VLAN. Mm -hmm. Customers can't do that themselves, they have to ask the service yeah. provider. But uh, the more interesting ones, Rooted, so something that connects to an NSX Edge, which is the typical one you'd use because the alternative, of course, is isolated network, doesn't go anywhere. Useful for, say, a heartbeat network, so I could have something like a little network like that. I, as a customer, can create those within the All PDC and within the vApp as well. And when it comes to breaking out, let's say that this is a, an internet facing application in my vApp. When I map this to my edge for the All PDC, I can simply create a load balanced VIP and present the application to the internet. And I can do the same if I move it with vCloud availability to another site. Great. Okay, great. So that explains one of the core concepts around vApps. And I think next time we're going to drive more into the service realm. So thank you very much, Jim.